Continuous Renal Replacement Therapy, CRRT, is a slow and smooth continuous extracorporeal blood purification. CRRT is usually implemented over 24 hours to several days with an aim of gentle removal of fluid overload and excess ceramic toxins. Where the continuous filtration simulates the continuity of kidney functions. CRRT mimics the native kidney. Hemodynamic stability is improved and multiple hypotensive episodes are significantly reduced. The kidney. The kidney functions using three principles, ultrafiltration, excretion and reabsorption. The kidney consists of three parts, the cortex, medulla and the renal pelvis. The cortex outer layer contains 80% of the nephrons. These nephrons filter the blood continuously to maintain balance. The medulla inner layer contains 20% of the nephrons. These nephrons also filter the blood, but have the added responsibility to concentrate urine. This becomes an important diagnostic tool. The renal pelvis is the start of the collecting system, containing the collecting tubules and the ureter. The nephron. The functional unit of the kidney is called a nephron. Each kidney has about 1 million nephrons. Each nephron contains a glomerulus, which functions as an individual filtering unit. It also contains tubules for secretion and absorption of substances. The blood pathways. Tubules. Blood leaves the heart, enters the abdominal aorta and enters the kidney through the renal artery. The renal artery divides into seven branches of arterioles until it becomes the afferent arteriole. The afferent arteriole carries blood to the glomerulus where it is filtered. It then leaves the glomerulus through the afferent arteriole, and is returned to the venous system. This system branches into many larger vessels until it becomes the renal vein. Blood leaves the kidney via the renal vein, and is returned to the heart via the inferior vena cava. The glomerulus the glomerulus consists of a group of cells with selective permeability. It is a semi-permeable membrane. Selective permeability means that certain substances will cross the membrane and others will not be allowed to cross. Through selective permeability, the kidney regulates fluid and electrolyte balance. The T-filter is a sample of a membrane with selective permeability. The kidneys produce approximately 180 liters of filtrate per day. Only 1.5 to 2 liters are excreted as urine. The remaining 178 liters remain in the body. This is simply recycled body water. The afferent and efferent arterioles. The afferent arteriole has a larger lumen than the afferent arteriole. Therefore, blood flows into the glomerulus faster than it flows out, which creates a pooling of blood in the Bowman's capsule. Hydrostatic pressure on the blood will force fluid to cross the glomerular membrane and enter the tubules. This is ultrafiltration. As filtrate flows through the tubular network, special cells will respond to the need for reabsorption and secretion. The end product of this filtrate is urine. In the normal kidney, this urine will be the right color, have the right osmolality, and contain the right substances. The urine color is light to dark yellow depending on volume, and the color is provided by solutes. 
Osmolality is used because it measures particles independently of their molecular weight. Substances including urea, creating in, phosphorus, potassium acids etc. are cleaned and filtered to keep the blood values normal. The goal of the kidney is to maintain a normal balance of fluids, electrolytes, minerals and acid base. It works continuously to preserve equilibrium and homeostasis. The kidneys also produce hormones like renin, vitamin D and erythropoietin. Renin promotes sodium retention and it also causes vasoconstriction. Vitamin D stimulates calcium and phosphate absorption. Erythropoietin promotes production of red blood cells in the bone marrow. Acute renal failure or acute renal injury. Acute renal failure ARF, results from the sudden loss of kidney function. Acute renal failure in the setting of critical care patients is defined as an abrupt decline in glomerular filtration rate resulting from ischemic or toxic injury to the kidney. Waste products that are usually excreted by the kidney accumulate in the blood. Acute renal failure may be accompanied by metabolic, acid base and electrolyte disturbances and fluid overload. Acute renal failure may affect many other organ systems. Acute renal failure often requires immediate treatment. History of CRRT The CRRT was discovered in 1977 when Kramer introducing a catheter into the femoral vein before hemodialysis, accidentally inserted the catheter into the femoral artery. He realized the possibility of using the arteriovenous gradient for filtration of blood and fluid elimination. He replaced the excessive losses by continuous infusion of substituting solutions. He used for the method the term continuous arteriovenous hemofiltration, CVH. This was the first step in CRRT. Over the past 30 years CRRT has continued to develop and has emerged as a frontline therapy for treatment of critically ill patients with acute renal failure. CRRT Goals Removal of Waste Products Restoration of Acid Base Balance Correction of Electrolyte Abnormalities Hemodynamic Stabilization Fluid balance. Nutritional support. Removal and or modulation of septic mediators. CRRT indications. Accepted indications are acute renal failure combined with hemodynamic instability, cardiovascular, severe fluid overload unresponsive to diuretics. Hypercatabolic states trauma abdomyolysis. High fluid requirements, nutrition, blood products. Less established, non-renal indications. Sepsis, lactic acidosis, acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS, multiple organ dysfunction score, MODS. Chronic congestive heart failure, CHF, or decompensated CHF. Pre- and post-cardiovascular surgery coronary artery bypass graft, cabbage. During extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, ECMO, for fluid management. Principles of CRRT. Diffusion is the movement of solutes through a semi-permeable membrane from an area of higher concentration to an area of lower concentration until equilibrium has been established. Solutes move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. In CRRT, diffusion occurs when blood flows on one side of the membrane, 
and dialysate solution flows counter current on the other side. The dialysate does not mix with the blood. Efficient for removing small molecules but not large molecules. Molecular size and membrane type can affect clearances dialysate. Diffusion occurs during hemodialysis. Convection. Convection is the one-way movement of solutes through a semi-permeable membrane with a water flow. Sometimes it is referred to as solvent drag. Efficient for both larger and smaller molecules. The faster the substitution flow rate, the higher the clearance. Pressure difference between the blood and ultrafiltrate causes plasma water to be filtered across. This causes solvent drag for small and large molecules across the membrane leading to removal from the blood. The ultrafiltrate containing the solute should be replaced by substitution solutions. Substitution solutions must have near physiological levels of electrolytes and buffer, and be sterile. Solute molecular size and membrane type can affect clearances. Convection is a hemofiltration principle. Ultrafiltration. Ultrafiltration is the movement of fluid through a semi-permeable membrane along a pressure gradient. Positive and negative pressures affect ultrafiltration. Positive pressure is generated on the blood side of the membrane and negative pressure is generated on the fluid side. This gradient, positive to negative, influences the movement of fluid from the blood side to the fluid side, resulting in a net removal of fluid from the patient. The ultrafiltration rate depends on the pressure applied to the filter, inside and outside the fibers. Minimal solute clearance happens by convection during ultrafiltration. Adsorption Adsorption is the adherence of solutes and biological matter to the surface of a membrane. High levels of adsorption can cause certain filters to clog and become ineffective. Membrane type affects adsorptive tendencies or effectiveness. Adsorption may also cause limited removal of some solutes, for example, B2 microglobulins from the blood. CRRT includes several treatment modalities that use a venovenous access. The choice will depend on the needs of the patient and on the preference of the physician. Slow Continuous Ultrafiltration scuff. Removal of ultrafiltrate at low rates without administration of a substitution solution. The purpose is to prevent or treat volume overload when waste product removal or pH correction isn't necessary. Continuous venovenous hemofiltration CVVH. Continuous convective removal of waste products small and large molecules utilizing a substitution solution. pH is affected with the buffer contained in the substitution solution. Continuous venovenous hemodialysis, CVVHD. Continuous diffusive removal of waste products, small molecules, utilizing a dialysis solution. pH is also affected with the buffer contained in the dialysate. Continuous venovenous simodia filtration, CVVHDF. Continuous diffusive and convective removal of waste products, small and large molecules, utilizing both dialysate and substitution solution. pH is also affected with the buffer contained in the dialysate and substitution solution. You have selected the simple module. In this section, we will review how to set up, initiate prime, make cartridge connections, program treatment settings, 
launch and monitor treatment, and we'll discuss end treatment. Let's start by turning on one view. You can remove the power cord from the wall outlet and reinsert it, or depress the reset button on the jewel box. Wait for the standby screen, then choose new patient or current patient as appropriate. Click on the simple button located on the bottom of the therapy summary screen and follow the instructions. Click on details for more information. We'll start with setup. Gather and inspect your supplies. Open the cycler door completely and leave the handle up. Turn the cycler and optional warmer on. Wait for the yellow bars to flash. Unpack the cartridge and tighten the patient line connections. Lift the priming spike from the cartridge and insert the cartridge into the cycler and press the tubing into all three air detectors. Close the cycler door carefully to ensure tubing is clear. Insert the access pressure pod monitoring line into the connection point on the cycler. While maintaining firm pressure, twist the tip a quarter of a turn counterclockwise, then tighten the locking collar. This seals the connection. Based on the therapy prescription, confirm the therapy fluid connections at the filter. The cartridge is already configured for CVVH. You do not need to make any changes. For CVVHD or SCUF, Remove the green therapy fluid outlet line from the pre-filter T to the dialysate port and cap the pre-filter T. Make sure your clamps are open. You are finished with setup. Click on the initiate button. Insert the priming spike into one liter of normal saline until the saline bag is flush with the disc on the priming spike. Press the Add Fluid key to begin prime. Clamp all end spikes of the Therapy Multi-Line Adapter. If you are using the optional fluid warmer, Follow the on-screen instructions to load and prime it. If you are not using the optional fluid warmer, follow the instructions in quick start note NC2939, removal of warmer bag. Your manager or educator can obtain this from the NX Documents website.
Set up the waistline by securing the end of the waistline extension to the IV pole. At this point, do not connect it to the cartridge. Remove the end cap from the other end and then position it in the drain. Do not submerge the end of the waistline. Once the prime and alarms test is complete, the machine will chime. You will then verify the first display test, the eights. If all the light segments are lit, press the mute key to confirm. The machine will chime again for the second display test. Compare the numbers and letters displayed to the picture in one view, step nine. Press mute to confirm. Verify the 23 in the top window, indicating that the system is in recirculation. You have not yet completed all the steps required before connecting the cartridge. Do not push stop. Do not clamp lines or make cartridge connections. Do not connect the patient to the device. Remove the air from the blood circuit by snapping the lines beginning at the priming spike. Locate the filter on the left side of the cycler. Remove it from the cartridge and then gently tap the filter using the palm of your hand several times. Place the filter in the filter holder with the post filter port upright. Prime the post filter ports. Snap the venous patient line all the way back to the saline bag. Press stop. Confirm that your facility's default treatment rates are displayed. Prime is now completed. All pumps are stopped and all safety alarms are armed. You are in patient connect mode. Prime the arterial T's. You have completed the steps in prime. You can now move to make cartridge connections. Locate the start of the saline line and follow the line to the white and green clamps. Clamp the saline line and clamp the therapy fluid inlet line, then disconnect. Make sure to keep the connection sterile. Attach the saline line to the saline T. Do not unclamp. Connect the therapy fluid inlet line to the warmer outlet or the therapy fluid tubing if not using the warmer and unclamp. Go back to the priming spike and find your yellow waistline. Clamp and disconnect this line and connect it to the waistline extension. Unclamp both. 
Locate the patient lines at the priming spike, clamp, and disconnect. Connect patient lines to the patient's vascular access and unclamp all clamps. Confirm that the system is ready. Click on the details button on step number four to confirm that the system is ready. Completion of these steps may prevent inadvertent alarms. Check the optional fluid warmer and make sure that the air trap is full of fluid and the control knob is at 12 o'clock. Look at the patient lines to see if they are connected to the vascular access and all clamps are open. Check that the saline line and the saline T are clamped. Check the waistline to see that all clamps are open and the end cap is removed. Make sure that the filter is in the filter holder with the post filter port upright. Check that the therapy fluid clamps on the lines being used are open. This completes the make cartridge connection section. Click the program button to program your treatment settings. Press the volume toggle and observe VOL in the bottom window. Enter the therapy volume goals. Make sure that you see VOL in the red window when entering the volumes. Press the volume toggle to return to the rates display or the rate display will reappear if the buttons are not engaged for 10 seconds. Adjust your therapy rates. This completes the section on programming your treatment settings. Click on the launch button to learn how to start the therapy. Press the treatment key to start the treatment. Congratulations, you have successfully started the therapy. Refer to the detailed buttons in one view for more information on monitoring the treatment. Monitor the treatment and provide appropriate interventions if necessary as outlined by your hospital protocol. To end the treatment and return the blood, click on the end button in one view. Choose your desired type of rinse back by referring to the end treatment module. You have selected the changing therapy fluid bags module. This module will review the steps to change your therapy fluid bags. Let's start by preparing a five liter bag of therapy fluid. To change the bags all at once, simply clamp all but one bag. Replace empty or near empty bags with full bags.
Once this is completed, unclamp all the new bags. Clamp the remaining empty bag, then replace with a full bag and unclamp. Be sure to open the clamps and completely break any frangibles. Press the volume toggle. Make sure you see VOL in the red window and enter the total volume hung minus one liter. While in the volume screen, increase the number in the yellow window to 9.99. Return to the rate screen and verify your therapy rates are set correctly. This module gives instruction on basic troubleshooting on the Next Stage System 1. We will review the difference between yellow cautions and red alarms. Cautions and alarms are identified in the condition bar on one view and have their own distinct sound that was selected by your facility. A solid green bar indicates the safe operating condition. A yellow outlined box where no sound is heard is a non-interventional caution. This is information being conveyed to the user where no intervention is necessary. A solid yellow box is an interventional caution and the sound is heard. This indicates that the blood pump has not stopped, but an intervention is required to continue the therapy. A solid red box is an alarm and a different sound is heard. This indicates that all pumps are stopped and an immediate intervention by the user is required. Yellow cautions are indicated by a specific audible sound and a solid yellow condition bar on one view. Use the acronym MIT to resolve a yellow caution. Mute, information, treatment. Let's review a yellow caution number 14. Press mute. Click more information icon. In this example, the caution indicates that air is in the therapy fluid or there is an occlusion in the therapy fluid line. Check possible sources of air or occlusion and correct. If necessary, remove the air from the air vent on the optional fluid warmer. Press treatment. Check to see if your pumps have turned on. Red alarms are indicated by a specific audible alarm sound and a red condition bar on one view. Use the acronym MIST to resolve a red alarm. Mute, information, stop, treatment. First mute the alarm by pushing the mute button. This is the M in MIST. Click on the More Info button to get more information to resolve the alarm. This is the I in MIST. The pop-up screen contains the possible causes and corrective measures. Once the problem is corrected, push the Stop key. This is the S in MIST. Next, press the Treatment key. This is the T in MIST to continue the therapy. Check to see if your pumps have turned on. Let's review an actual red alarm number 24, access pressure at low limit. When the alarm sounds, note the condition bar for the type of alarm it is. Press mute. Mute silences the audible alarm. Click on more info on the one view status bar. This alarm is identifying a flow problem from the patient's vascular access. Follow your hospital's protocol as it relates to troubleshooting of vascular access. Once the problem has been resolved, push the stop key. You may wonder why you need to press the stop key since all of the pumps are stopped anyway. Pressing the stop key after an alarm lets the machine know you have corrected the problem. It also resets the alarm. Next, press the treatment button to continue the therapy. Make sure your pumps are turned on. 
Troubleshooting air alarms. If air is sensed at the Venus air detector, a red alarm number 10, check for Venus air, will occur. Press mute to silence the audible sound. Click on more info to open the alarm specific help screen. Follow the instructions. Press stop. Remove air from the pulse filter port by using a 20 cc syringe. Remove the air and return only the blood. Press treatment and the yellow caution window will display 12, air recovery underway. Press mute. Close the alarm window and open the yellow caution. Check for air in the venous line between the machine and the patient. If air is seen, press stop and the red alarm number 10 will sound again. Repeat missed. If no air is seen, press treatment to continue the therapy. Flush the post filter cap with 3 milliliters of saline to clear the blood. Then clamp the port securely. Continue to observe the pulse filter cap for air. Selected the Delivering a Fluid Bus Module. Access the instructions in FYI. Note the fluid volume in the saline bag. Then unclamp the saline T and the saline line. When the desired saline volume is delivered, reclamp the saline T, the red clamp, and the saline line, the white clamp. This additional saline may be considered when calculating fluid balance and ultrafiltration target based on your hospital's protocol and the patient's fluid volume status. First, ensure that no tubing is pinched, clamped, or leaking. From the therapy summary screen, click the One View Graph button. Select appropriate interval selection for the length of time the patient has been on therapy. You are looking at the trending of pressures. Any change in pressure trends indicates that clogging or clotting is likely occurring. Look at the red line. If the access pressure is decreasing or becoming more negative, this indicates the arterial access is clotting. Look at the blue line. If the venous pressure is increasing, this indicates the patient's access on the return line is clotting. If no access clotting is indicated, then verify that filter clogging or clotting is occurring. Look at the blue line again. The venous pressure will decrease if there is filter clogging or clotting. Look at the yellow line. The effluent pressure will increase or decrease if the filter is clogging or clotting. Look at the orange line. The balance chamber pressure will increase or decrease if the filter is clogging or clotting. Look at the red line once more. The access pressure will increase, become less negative, if the filter is clogging or clotting. Changes in these pressures indicate clogging or clotting, but will not predict when clotting or clogging will happen.
The pressure changes that you are observing will indicate which alarm you will see with imminent clotting. For example, if your venous pressure is decreasing and your effluent and balance chamber pressures are increasing, you may see a series of low venous pressure and high balance chamber pressure alarms. There are two methods you can use to visualize clotting in the filter. The first is to view the filter header using a flashlight. Second, you can flush the filter to determine the extent of clotting. For the best visualization of the filter, open the clamps on the saline line and the saline T. This allows saline to flow. Occlude the arterial or access patient line by clamping the large red clamp. Allow 100 to 200 cc's of saline to be infused. When flushing is complete, Release the arterial or access patient line, that red clamp, and reclamp the saline line and the saline T. Observe the filter for signs of clotting. If extensive clotting is seen, consider returning the patient's blood using either a planned return or an emergency return. If extensive clotting is not observed, Continue the therapy and observe for signs of clogging or clotting. We will review steps to treat hypotension, give a fluid bolus, and perform an emergency return of blood. Let's review the treatment of hypotension. Hypotension during therapy is usually due to ultrafiltration. Reduce the ultrafiltration rate using the yellow down arrow. Or you can use the crash key. Press and hold stop for two seconds to immediately reduce therapy fluid and ultrafiltration rates to zero. After hypotension is treated, press treatment to return to previous rates. If you need to give a fluid bolus, access the instructions by clicking FYI in the therapy summary screen. If you choose to do an emergency return of blood, click the details button for the directions. Make sure there is at least 300 to 500 cc's of saline available to rinse back the blood. To quickly rinse the blood back to the patient, simply open the saline line and the saline T and allow saline to flow. Occlude the arterial patient line close to the patient. Allow saline to infuse and return the patient's blood. When the venous patient line is clear, press the stop key. Clamp the venous patient line and follow your hospital's protocol for disconnection. If the patient is likely to restart therapy when the emergency is over, consider performing a temporary disconnect. Click the simple button on the therapy summary screen. Click the end button and choose the type of blood return desired by clicking on the detail button. Let's first review a planned return. Make sure enough saline is available to rinse back the blood. You'll need 300 to 500 milliliters of saline. Press and hold the stop key for two seconds. This stops the green and yellow pumps, but leaves the blood pump running. Press the stop key again to stop the blood pump. Verify the rinse back display. Clamp and disconnect the arterial blood line from the patient's access and reconnect the arterial line to the red port on the priming spike. Press the Add Fluid key to begin returning the blood. As the saline is delivered to the system, the 210 cc's will count down to zero 
signaling the completion of blood return. When rinse back is complete, clamp and disconnect the venous or return patient line from the patient's vascular access and connect the line to the blue port on the priming spike. If you are discontinuing therapy or changing the cartridge, you'll need to power the cycler off to remove the cartridge. Turn the power switches to both the cycler and fluid warmer off. Open the cycler door and remove the disposables. If you choose to do an emergency return of blood, click the details button for the directions. Make sure there is at least 300 to 500 cc's of saline available to rinse back the blood. To quickly rinse the blood back to the patient, simply open the saline line and the saline T and allow saline to flow. Occlude the arterial patient line close to the patient. Allow saline to infuse and return the patient's blood. When the venous patient line is clear, press the stop key. Clamp the venous patient line and follow your hospital's protocol for disconnection. If the patient is likely to restart therapy when the emergency is over, consider performing a temporary disconnect. I hope you learn from my video. Please subscribe and share to support my channel. Press the bell button to be notified with my upcoming videos. Thank you.